Hi guys, it's Julia with Undressing the Issue. And today I want to talk about kind of a hot topic, which is dating. Oh, dating. Um, well, I'm choosing this topic because it's, uh, it's complicated, it's frustrating, And I just hear so many complaints from my single clients, my single friends. And I also remember what that was like when I was single. And it kind of sucked, not going to lie. So um, I don't know where you guys find your potential dates. I don't know if Tinder is still a thing or if I'm just old and I don't know what the kids are doing these days. Or what's the other one now? Uh... I don't even remember the name of it. Um, Yeah, I don't remember. Um, I don't know because I'm not in that world because I'm not single. However, a lot of my clients and a lot of the people that I talk to on a regular basis are. So, oh, Bumble. There it is. It came back to me. Um, So, dating. Dating is complicated. I feel like a lot of people feel pressured to look a certain way, be a certain way when they meet somebody for the first time or when they are just starting to talk to someone before they even meet. Um, I know that there's this sentiment out there that people actually don't advertise their intentions, honestly, especially when it comes to online dating. For example, they'll say that they are looking for a relationship when really they're just looking for sex. Or they'll say they're single and then it turns out they're actually in a relationship or they're married even. Um, (laughs) Shout out to Ashley Madison for that one. So it's complicated. I mean, there's also, I feel like, a standard for how you present yourself online. Everybody wants to look, you know, a a certain way. I feel like pictures are taken at strategic angles um, with, you know, very specific types of lighting. Um, Maybe it's a few years ago, a few pounds ago, whatever it is. But there's this pressure, there's this standard that it seems as though people are constantly trying to meet. And... Uh, I'm not sure how good this is if you're just honestly trying to be yourself and to meet somebody who's a good match for you. If you're not being honest and if they're not being honest, then we're all just staring at a curated version of ourselves and it's just kind of a performance. It's not genuine. So there's that. There's the, you know, you have to have a full length picture or a picture of you petting a tiger or holding a yoga mat or whatever it is. And it's this sort of like unspoken requirement. Um, So with that, you know, online dating gets a little bit complicated. And then you hear stories of women who post their profiles and they get responses from men that are kind of gross with um, suggestions of what sexual acts they want to perform on them or their openers are along the lines of, damn, you're hot. And (laughs) oftentimes these advances are just not welcome. They're not appealing. That's not the way to get someone's attention, especially if that someone is actually looking for an honest, real relationship. So there's that. Um, I personally have tried online dating. I actually met my ex-husband online on Match.com, if you must know. That was back when it was real. (laughs) Or not real, new. I mean, I guess it's still real. But back when they had all these like promotions for two weeks of free communication or whatever it was. And he was the only message that I opened at the time, and the only date I went on. I mean, I do consider it an epic fail because it didn't exactly end well, but Match.com is not to blame for that. I am, and I'm going to get more into that. Um, But after my divorce, 
I also did a lot of online dating and I tried some of the free sites, Plenty of Fish, all of those. I tried Match.com. I tried uh, Tinder even. Tinder was awful. I don't think Bumble was around yet, so I didn't get the opportunity to try that. But I did try it with the um, like the friend, the B Bumble BFF, the friend match thing, um, which can also be kind of awkward. As adults, we no longer make friends as easily as we did when we were kids. I'm definitely noticing that the older I get. Um, so I just remember going on a lot of first dates <laughs> because there weren't a lot of second dates after the first dates. And... I started noticing that I was just kind of meeting the same kind of person. Um, somebody who was absolutely not a good match for me, but somebody who wasn't clear about their intentions, somebody who um, maybe wasn't even clear about how they look and used deceptive pictures on their profile. Um, I had one guy who, it wasn't even his picture. I don't even know who that was. Maybe it was one of those stock photos that come in picture frames that you buy at Home Goods. I don't know, but wasn't him. Definitely wasn't him. A lot of people lie about their height, too. That's like a thing nowadays. I guess men feel pressured to be a minimum of six feet tall. There's there's heightists out there, I guess. Um, but it was an interesting experience for me because... I found myself feeling the need to be this um, other version of myself, like, like an ulterior identity. And it just wasn't me. I found myself really primping and worrying about how I look, which I just don't do that much on a daily basis. I mean, not that I don't care, but I don't care as much as a lot of other women do, I guess. Um, then I also found myself getting really anxious that the person's not going to like me. And it was this aha moment for me when I was, when I had this revelation, I guess you could say, that why am I so concerned with what they think of me? How about what do I think of them? Um, as much as I'm in the market for a mate, so are they. But their goals are not mine. And quite frankly, uh, mine come first. So I started having this shift in the way that I approached dating. And with that, I started um, finding myself being more discerning in going on dates. And I'm going to talk about that a little more. But I do want to say... Um, Dating is complicated because when we put ourselves out there, first off, it's vulnerable. We are opening ourselves up to being judged, potentially rejected, and that is terrifying for a lot of people. I mean, being rejected is painful regardless, but when you enter that whole realm, especially with online dating, when you can really have access to so many different people so easily. If you really wanted to, you could go on multiple dates in one day. I mean, that's multiple risks of rejection in one day. That's a lot. And so I totally understand why it is so nerve wracking for a lot of people. And I think people get so caught up with that anxiety that they lose sight of their goal what their goal was in the first place in going out on a date. And also they kind of lose their self-awareness in the moment. They lose touch with themselves. Uh, they're no longer present. So um, I want to acknowledge the difficulty of taking that kind of risk and the discomfort with being vulnerable, putting yourself out there and potentially being negatively criticized or rejected because it's not easy. And I get that people want relationships. We want companionship. We're your social creatures. And this is just an, an awkward, difficult kind of activity that we engage in, especially here in the U.S., this courting process. So 
there's that piece of it. And there's also the component around what this brings up for us. I started touching on it a little bit, but I want to dive deeper into it. So even the act of getting ready, right? Primping. We're trying to look a certain way. We're trying to present ourselves a certain way. There's a certain image that we want to give off. We want to be viewed in a specific way. And we can get really preoccupied with this. I remember spending like 45 minutes trying to get my hair perfectly curled and making sure that my lipstick was on my lips and not anywhere else on my face. I don't know for maybe other people have that problem too, but I do. Um, And picking out my outfit, changing a bunch of times. I mean, this person's never met me. How do they know if I'm wearing my newest, nicest pair of jeans versus a pair that's been sitting in the back of my closet for four years? They don't know. But for some reason, I felt compelled to look my best. And to make it even more interesting, when I went on the date, I also was so meticulous and careful about my table manners, if we were having a meal, about how I sat, about making sure I'm not slouching because then I have that belly roll thing that, you know, every human being has, um... And it brought up a lot of those body image issues, which I think we could do an entire episode on, but we're inevitably going to touch on it here. Um, So it brings up all of these insecurities because essentially we feel like we're being put under the microscope by someone whose approval we may be seeking. So all of this is to say that when we already in preparation are going through all of these different processes in our minds of how I look, how I seem, how I appear, how I speak, how I chew, all of those things, how much attention are we actually able to pay to how the other person is seeming to us? And I do think that this is exactly why my uh, meeting of my ex-husband on Match.com was an epic fail and it was my fault. I got so wrapped up in all of those different things in trying to be this magical unicorn with no bodily functions, with perfect table manners, who can carry a conversation perfectly, have excellent timing for the funniest jokes and never get any green items in my teeth. (laughs) I was so worried about this that I was not paying any attention at all whatsoever to glaring red flags. And I found myself doing this again after my divorce when I was single and dating again. And I really think that this is not just me. Well, I hope that it's not just me. I'm pretty sure it's not. Um, But I think it speaks to something bigger. It speaks to how we go out in the world, given all of the insecurities that we all have. Everybody has them. That is just part of the human condition. We all have something that we're insecure about. And how we go about either hiding this or playing it down or worrying about it for the sake of being deemed attractive or desirable. And yes, exactly what I said earlier, the the belly roll or are they going to notice that I don't have a thigh gap or, you know, if I sit a certain way, I have a double, sometimes a triple chin, and my entire head and shoulders begin to look like a thumb. And (laughs) that's just not attractive, um, according to me. And so all of a sudden now I'm worried about all of these things at the same time. And meanwhile, I'm supposed to be listening to this person and gauging how I'm experiencing being around them and their company to determine if I like them. 
but I'm not even there. I'm worried about them liking me. And I feel like this insecurity, especially in relationships, comes up all the time, not just in dating, but even in sex. If you're hopping into bed with somebody for the first time and you guys have never seen each other's bodies in their full naked glory and we're being intimate for the first time, again, it's vulnerable. And yes, people get stuck inside their own heads. I mean, women talk all the time about, oh, you know, I don't like this sex position because, you know, the view of my chin and my breasts and my belly from that angle is terrible. But I also don't like this other position because then my cellulite is visible and, you know, there's no way I can even focus on trying to um, enjoy the interaction or have an orgasm because I'm so worried about what my partner is seeing. And men have their own insecurities around anything and everything. If you've thought of it, someone else probably has too. Body hair, penis size, muscle mass, body fat, whatever it is. But here's the deal. Nobody is perfect. They're not. I'm sorry. They're just not. Everybody has imperfections. Everybody has areas on their body that are not as they would like them to be. And that's kind of what makes all bodies beautiful is that they're perfectly imperfect. But with social media and with all of the stuff that we're exposed to and socialized to believe, we're taught that this is unacceptable, that there's something wrong with you if you have a lot of body hair or if your breasts are not a certain cup size or if your hair is too kinky. And that's just not the case. But all of this creates all of this insecurity. And it kind of builds this fog that we have trouble seeing through to be able to see past ourselves and to the other person to be able to be discerning. So I actually spoke about this the other day. So not to hate on Disney, but I'm about to. Um, if you look at Disney movies, like the old school ones, Snow White and, uh, Cinderella and Beauty and the Beast and, uh, The Little Mermaid, all of those, check out those little princesses. They have like 17 inch waists, C or D cups. They have hair that looks like a a full-on lace front wig, Beyonce style. They have these like 36 inch hips and legs that are probably about four or five feet long. This is a mutant. This is not real. It's not realistic. And yet this is what we are exposed to, or at least I was exposed to as a kid. And this gets ingrained. I've internalized that I'm supposed to have those curves. That's that's what makes a girl pretty. That's what makes a woman attractive. That, you know, she's supposed to have these giant doe eyes and these perfect symmetrical pink lips and, you know, all of these standards. But real people don't all look like that. Actually, none of them do. And yet here we are having internalized these standards of beauty since childhood and then beating up on ourselves for not looking that way. Well, um, Mr. Walt Disney, um, what the hell? It's not realistic. And I do love the current body positivity movement, all of those brands that are using um, models of all different shapes and sizes and colors. I love it. I love it because that's real. That's who we are. But we still get hung up and social media doesn't help that. And basically everything we're exposed to nowadays from our music to our video games to TV shows and everything that's out in the open, that's clearly visible, that we're inundated with, 
it all still speaks to that old ideal. And so we stay stuck in these insecurities. So fast forward to dating and you're on a date, you're at, I don't know, wherever, Cheesecake Factory. God, I'm dropping a lot of names today. (laughs) So you're at Cheesecake Factory, you really do want to order a slice, but you can't because then you're going to seem like you're a piggy uh, to your date. Um, So you order a salad and um, you're sitting in front of this person, you're worried about grabbing a piece of lettuce on your fork that's too big for your mouth and then looking like a cow trying to shove it in. Um, You're worried about talking with your mouth full, maybe having some food fall out. Um, Maybe I'm just speaking from my own experience, but I'll keep going. Um, Maybe you're sitting there worried about, you know, is your hair laying perfectly? Are you making enough eye contact? Are you asking enough questions? Are you talking about yourself too much? Did you mention your ex more than once? All of these things, you're so inside your own head. And nowhere in that whole list of things that you're thinking about is the question of what is the person in front of you doing? How do they look? Are they talking about themselves? Have they asked you any questions about yourself? Uh, Do you have anything in common with them? Do they seem responsible, reliable, believable, honest, um, attractive, maybe? Do they seem open? And we lose sight of this. And I really think that that is what gets in the way. That is one of the first steps that we need to really work on mastering in order to be able to find a partner who is actually a good fit, who we can have a healthy relationship with, who is a good communicator, who can attune to us, who can basically get on our level. And because of this, because we can't get that first step right, so many people find themselves getting involved with the same type of partner over and over and over again. I didn't see it coming. I know that I tend to attract people who are kind of needy and clingy, and I really don't like that, but I thought this one was different. Well, when you first met them, what made you think that? Well, they were hot. Oh, okay, they're hot. Yeah, that's a really good indicator. That is the barometer by which we measure uh, somebody's neediness. Totally. No. So it's this kind of stuff. This is why we make these mistakes in the first place. I mean, there's a lot more to it. You also have to take into consideration people are not entirely honest (laughs) upon those first meetings, like we already talked about, with profiles that aren't completely transparent or honest or even accurate, with uh, intentions and introductions and how we present ourselves not being totally honest. There's a lot up against us actually finding somebody who is realistically a good fit. So... Of course, people are frustrated with dating. People are aggravated. They feel like they are getting nowhere. They feel like they're repeating patterns. And they're right. They are. How would it be for you to go on a date wearing whatever you wear to go out to the diner with your friends, even your ripped jeans, an old faded t-shirt, It doesn't matter, some lip gloss and some mascara, and you're good to go, and you just be yourself. You eat how you normally eat, you order what you want, and you're honest. And God forbid, you might even get something stuck in your teeth and just roll with it. How would that be? Do you think that the other person is going to be repulsed by you? Are you guaranteed to not be attractive? Are you worried about how you're going to be seen or viewed? And bigger question, why is that important to you? Where do you place your own value in yourself? Does your value lie in your attractiveness? In how feminine or masculine or non-binary or androgynous you appear? What is it that you're placing your value in? 
I personally place value in my large, voluptuous, very sexy brain. Yeah, how about that? I know I'm intelligent and I'm proud of that. And that is what I like to lead with. So I think this is a big question, but I will be honest, I didn't always feel that way. (sighs) Absolutely not. I've had my insecurities. I've had my days of dating the wrong people, being attracted to people who weren't good for me, who didn't treat me well, who weren't honest with me. I'd made all those mistakes. I get it. And I also, in hindsight, have learned where I went wrong and not picking up on the cues that they were absolutely giving me and what also stood in the way of me doing anything about the cues when I did notice them. And a lot of it is that fear of being alone, of uh, not being desired, of being rejected, being abandoned. Um, And that also played a role in me speaking up for myself and saying what I need, what I don't tolerate, what's a deal breaker for me um, when I did see it come up. And it caused a lot of (laughs) heartache, and many, many years of just struggling in relationships. So I really think that this issue is important, and we're probably going to need to keep circling back and touching on it. But I do hope that the next time you go on a date, pay less attention to yourself and how you're looking and what you're doing, and pay attention to the person across from you. Do we actually like them? Do, we, do they seem insecure? Do they seem honest? Are they trying to put it on for you? What's, what's actually happening? Are you connecting to them beyond just physical attraction? And are they giving you any cues that they are not a good partner? Are they talking about themselves a lot? Are they um, criticizing you even indirectly? Thank you, Neil Strauss, for the uh, the game book, <laughs> which is so manipulative and it's so terrible. But some people still actually do this, and it's it's awful. If you haven't, if you don't know what I'm talking about, Google it, and you will know very quickly. But um, I do think that we need to start paying more attention, looking beyond ourselves and around. And the other piece of it is you know, we also need to be honest. I actually decided to do a little experiment when I was single. And I decided to see what would happen if I posted a profile, I think it was on Plenty of Fish actually, where I was completely honest about what I'm looking for, who I am, what I like, what I don't like, what I'm about. And it was honest. It was, you know, I work a lot. Um, I have a potty mouth. I'm a wise ass. I have kind of a domineering personality. Um, I have a dirty sense of humor. Um, also I'm an extroverted introvert, but I really love my alone time and that's how I recharge. And that means I like to not leave my house and stay in my pajamas and not see anybody and kind of be a hermit sometimes And that also means I don't want to see whoever I'm dating. That includes them. Um, It also means that I am not the type of girl who wears a whole lot of makeup every day. Sorry. And um, if you really want to get to know me, maybe you can meet me at the grocery store late on a Saturday night when I like to do my shopping, when I'm wearing my finest sweatpants, and walk around the hummus aisle with me. That's how you get to know me because that's who I really am. And it was really interesting to see the responses. There were some people that just loved it. They were like, oh, this is refreshing. It's honest. It's real. And I love seeing this. It's so cool. And then I had other people who basically just said, wow, you're not even trying. Uh, no, bitch, I'm not. So... It's interesting to see how for some people they get it and they understand just the frustration of having to meet this ridiculous standard and other people live and die by this standard. 
And to come across a person who doesn't care is just, it's like an abomination. You know, we're all working so hard to fit this mold. And who do you think you are for not even trying? Well, I'm me. Take it or leave it. So uh, dating is frustrating for so many reasons. I feel like we're just scratching the surface here. And by we, I mean the royal we, me, myself, and I. Um, (laughs) But I do think that there's a lot to this. And it comes into the relationship if you get involved with that person long term. It comes into our bedrooms in sex, in sensuality, in physical intimacy of any kind, these insecurities, these standards, these narratives that we've adopted about ourselves, about how we look, about who we're supposed to be and how we're supposed to be. And I think the first step in improving this whole process for yourself is to be more aware of what you're doing. What are you doing? You're sitting in front of this person. Are you paying attention to them or are you focusing on yourself? And in paying attention to them, is whatever they're doing okay with you? Is it something that you like? Is it something that you don't like? Does it rub you the wrong way? Is it something that's a turnoff? All of that is okay. You don't have to let things slide and paint red flags green just because you don't want to be fill in the blank. Alone, rejected, lonely, single, uh, in the middle of a dry spell for however long, whatever your reason is. So pay attention. Step one, I'm sure I'll have more to say on this in the future, but I'm going to leave you guys with that because... You know, I've already been rambling for a while, Um, but I hope this gives you some food for thought and maybe you could try some of these things the next time you have a date on your calendar and go into it with a little bit of a different approach and see how it feels. That's all you got to do. We're not trying to attach to any specific outcome. We're just doing it for the sake of seeing how it feels for us. Do we walk away feeling good about our decision, feeling safe, feeling like we were very clear? Or do we walk away feeling like, well, that date dragged on longer than it should. I don't know why I didn't cut it off sooner. I don't even know why I met with this person. There were all these red flags before we even met up when we were still texting. Pay attention to that. Pay attention to what compelled you to follow through with things that didn't feel right for you and work off of that that is a starting point and try to do better the next time doesn't have to be perfect just slightly better just even by a hair so on that note uh good luck out there happy fishing and I hope that you guys get some some type of uh, guidance, um, clarity, some type of strategy even maybe for going out into the dating world and for being able to pick a partner that is maybe different and even better than what you've picked in the past. So good luck. Thanks for listening. As always, uh, feel free to leave feedback, questions, comments, concerns, complaints, what have you. And uh, thanks again.